Hey guys, what's up? You're watching Papu. It's been a long time since the, since the last bad rep, but I'm very happy to be back. I just had some personal issues and I couldn't be here with you. But I have to say that summer is coming soon and I'll have more time to be, to be playing games. Therefore, um, I'll be just posting more and more bad reps, I hope. One of the things I have to say, though, is that it's pretty hard to play and take pictures, mainly because it, if everything goes on you, it's actually quite annoying and difficult. But as I'm getting more experience, and it's actually slightly easier. And, well, if people are willing to help me while I'm playing, then that's even better. And it's happening, actually. So today, I want to talk about this special campaign called the Shinotech. And it's very nice because you basically play, uh, well, we, we are actually going to play f three matches, I think, or five, can't remember now. But the thing is that you have this special bonus that you can see right here. You've got this environmental adap adaptation, which makes basically all your troops of your in your army gain this special skill multi-terrain. And if you already had multi-terrain, you get a light flamethrower. At no cost, which it makes it very nice. Then you have the Xenotech Analyst, which provides you with a mod of plus three on your whip rolls to accomplish any type of mission objective, like to connect an antenna or to control something. Okay. Then you've got the Emerald Path, which uh, allows you to deploy four inches in all missions, I mean, farther. Plus, in addition to that, the second part of your movement with uh, the medium infantry. Uh, they basically are going to make this these, uh, 10, 10 centimeters. I'm sorry, I'm Spanish, so I still work with metric system. <laughs> um, sorry for the inches. And that's pretty much it. Uh, today we played the second one. I have to say that I made a real, a really big mistake because I didn't read this, uh, these rules properly and I rushed a little bit my choice uh, among these bonus basically whatever you choose is gonna be for the rest of the campaign so because of of the first um, match uh, through the thickness I read this then jungle all troopers pressing most terrain get a plus inch bonus to their first move value blah 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 so I thought oh, okay then fine I'm just gonna choose the first one However, I didn't read the fact that that's going to be there for the rest of the campaign. So today I played the second, the second one, which is, ooh, let me see, let me see. Yeah, this one, a beam of light. And of course it was rubbish. Well, I mean, no big thing, especially because I'm playing more aggression force and I don't have a lot of troop with multi-terrain. And then no flame throw. And I don't get any kind of uh, movement bonus on this uh, particular um, chapter. So basically, uh, it's acquisition. Everybody knows about it. But if not, just very quickly, you have to connect antennas. You have to control antennas. You have to control the tech coffin. And what else? What else? And you have to, if you control the tech coffin with your data tracker, at the end of the game, you get extra objective points. And if you control the tech coffin with the own channel tech at the end of the game, you get one extra point. But you cannot um, accumulate it with the this one in particular, that one here. Okay. So having said that, let's take a look at the list. This, this, this list is not actually my favorite, but one of the things I've learned is that you really need to adapt your list to the mission. I think that is super important and you have to do it. So basically I'm playing in the first group, I'm playing a 10, which are actually 11 um, or maybe 12 orders. I'll tell you why now in a split second. Mainly because I'm carrying this Sogorad with this Ragtorag. Okay, that's the duo. Sogorad is basically kind of a beast. Let me just move my camera right here so you can see. Well, actually right here. Yeah, perfect. So this Sogorad, He's basically, uh, he's got automatic key, by immunity, uh, fire team duo, which makes sense because we're playing this Ragtorak NCO with the uh, Balkan shotgun, amazingly good, fire ammunition, nothing else to say. Um, the NCO 
gives you the the, the, the lieutenant order, which is, makes it very good because you can move the Sogorat as well. Okay, then we have a more lieutenant, no big deal about it. A couple of Ica drones because they're very good. I do not normally play this good drone, but for the special mission, I wanted to. Then I'm playing this Kurgat because going back here, you get uh, engineer and hacker bonus, as you can read right here. And just by possessing uh, an engineer or a hacker, automatically you have a mod of plus three when you're trying to activate antennas. Oh, I didn't read that anyway. Didn't affect that much. Activate antennas or uh, when you are trying to place the multi scanner. Okay, there is a data a data tracker, and of course there is a channel tech. That's what the whole whole, whole campaign is is about. So going back to the list very quickly, I've got this Kurga because he's he's an engineer, so uh, I'm willing to have this um, this bonus. Then a couple of slave drones. I'll tell you later what happens with the slave drones. What, what are the things that I've learned by playing these slave drones? Um, or a hacker. Something relevant to say is that if you check the hacking programs, you'll realize that this guy's got some attacking programs, which makes him very flexible because he can give uh, assisted fire to the uh, where are you to the Q drone or he can help not in this list but in particular but he can help uh, if you want to um, play with them uh, with this guy what 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 are you called oh I think is there a no that right no oh my god it's so hard Raktor, Raktor, um, what's the name? I'm horrible for the names. Raktor, no, Razia, with Razia, it's exactly. So just in case you don't know, because they have this combat jump, you can just use the hacker to make it blind whenever, wherever you want. Okay, well, with, a, with an extremely nice bonus. I think it's plus six. Okay, having said that, I crack a Renegade. I had to spend some points here, so I just uh, I like this profile with the saw machine gun. And the test mine. Some people like the other version, but I think this has more flexibility when you're trying to kill uh, more warbonds because mainly warbonds have this uh, chain rifle, and you can kill them quite easily with the submachine gun. So that's why I I do like uh, this profile more than the other one. That's something I learned from watching Volesi, which is someone I really like following. And then I have this uh, this second group that I think is just amazing. I just play like this in my other list, and I really like it. Mainly, it's just like the probably one of the cheapest scores in this game. It's just an Osnard that is going to be hidden all the time with four Gakis that are going to be hidden all the time. This Osnard is carrying a combi rifle, not amazing mm, weapon, but okay. But but he's carrying this light smoke grenade launcher, which can you know easily place two uh, smoke templates on the table and and finish some some missions quite easily but the main idea is to hide these guys okay in such a way that no one can can really get there and play all the orders with this story uh, with tactical awareness which is actually an extra order for this guy uh, and it's actually what you want because he's carrying an agent is kind of hard to hack so, I really like this guy. Yes, he's expensive, but I think it's worth. He's got four um, ammo, BTS-6, two wounds, jungle terrain. Very useful. And, yeah, you can make an amazing special fire team and blah, 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 which is good. I'm not saying it's bad, but I really like this story. Just on its, on, on his own. Okay, so having said that, let's just take a closer look to the to the game. Basically, that was the table, that was my deployment area, and that was my opponent deployment area. I have to say that in this mission, because it's acquisition, um, one of the things I've learned is that you really want to close the game. I mean, end the game. Why? Mainly because all the objectives says at the say sorry at the end of the game, blah. So. What I've learned is in all those missions that it says at the end of the game, you're going to go second, no matter what. Actually, the other day we were discussing about 
winning the, the rule and saying, okay, I'm going second. Because you can do that. You're allowed to do that. Of course, your opponent is going to say, okay, if you want to go second, you're going to deploy there and you're going to deploy first. Okay? Which, yeah, okay, you're giving a lot of advantage, apparently, to your opponent, but it's the only way that you are ensuring that you are actually uh, ending the game. So you are going to have the third and last turn, which this is actually what you want. Something else, and the reason why I'm playing this list, is because in this mission, um, in case you want to deploy something that usually would deploy farther than your deployment area, in this case you had to pass a, a physic roll minus three. Okay? So I thought, you know what, I'm not going to play the list I normally play with the one I'm feeling very comfortable with. And instead, I'm just going to readapt a little bit the list. So I'm not playing my Razia, which I think is like, is mandatory to be played if you play in Moritz. Uh, but this time, of course, I didn't want to because I didn't, I didn't want to roll any dice and, and fail. Okay, so I'm not playing the rest yet. Anyway, so this was the the mission I got. Um, just in case you don't understand Spanish, well, basically. You have to successfully pass to whip rolls uh, using the hacking program Spotlight against the enemy's HPT. Okay. Okay. Well, it was better than the other one. I can't remember what the other one was, but I didn't. I didn't choose it. So, um, here is my enemy's deployment. He deployed first because he was going first. So perfect. That is a Texas with a heavy flamethrower. Here we've got a triad with a Sukul with a missile launcher. Here we've got a Garrel with the sniper rifle and the multi specter visor level two, and that is like a chain of command. Plus, plus, sorry, this is the guy that allows uh, this guy that has like the symbio armor to have the symbio mate represented by this guy. We we normally call them Pokemons because they really look like Pokemons. <laughs> so. From, from now on, I'm going to be calling them Pokemon, okay? But I want you to be aware that I'm actually talking about symbiote mates. What else? Okay, here we are with another triad. This time, um, let me just move. Opa, too, too far away. Um, this time, this guy is using actually a new weapon, something that Zoha just got um, recently. It was pretty interesting. If I'm not mistaken, you can shoot with burst to and it's damage 14 and I think the range is uh, plus 3 from 40 to 60 centimeters but it's zeros from 0 to 40 I think something like that can't remember very well or you can roll one dice and then it's pretty much the same but the damage is 16 which is like okay not bad this is a Sukeul with uh, his specialist or she actually and he's got the K1 rifle, combi rifle and this is a Mako with the Eclipse grenades and the martial art and blah 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 and let me see oh. and this is another triad okay and uh, pretty much the same this is a Suke uh, with this guy that allows him to have the symbiote mate or the Pokemon and the Mako and this is another Taxa Something um, to point out, she's carrying an HMG, if I'm not mistaken. All right, here is a Kauri with uh, all the biometrical sensor, I think it's called in English. And this guy is, uh, what is this guy doing here? I can't remember, can't remember this guy. Anyway, that's how it looks like. And in my side of the battlefield, I've got an Ikadron right here covering this, uh, my right flank or his left flank. Then I've got here my Sagarad with the, my Sagarad with my Raktorak, with my core here, all of them prone. As you can see, they are deploying in such a way that he, you don't trigger a chain of explosions if one of them gets killed. And my Osnat with the smoke grenade launcher and the combi rifle. Um, what else? Here I've got my Hakka, here I've got my Morad that is just 
a cheerleader. Okay, something I've learned that I'd like to point out is that if you want to play a cool lieutenant, don't make it that easy for your opponent to realize that, oh, well, if you're playing that miniature for real, that's your lieutenant. Okay, so don't don't make that mistake again. I mean, again, don't make that mistake. Anyway, anyway they're both prone. Here is my, my total reaction board with my engineer here on top of this building. And... Um, this is the slave drone that can easily repair that guy just by crawling down the stairs. And here is my flash bolt bot, a points, hematism. Okay, another picture. Then, oh, by the way, this is my HPT and this is my Krakow Renegade that, just for the record, it wasn't facing my side of the table, but due to the weapon that is pretty annoying, I couldn't just like literally put it facing the enemy's table so i i just communicate well with my with my opponent and say hey listen this is actually facing you but due to the weapon i can't so i just place it like that he said yeah yeah no problem cool then he this was his reserve troop can't remember the name of it oh by the way there were two camo markers right here and his hvc was right there and this is uh can't remember but he was carrying a uh, Combi, of maybe a viral combi rifle, and or viral pistols and combi breakers, something like that. I can't remember, um, but it's quite relevant. Maybe you can write uh, on the comments if you can recognize this profile or this miniature. And my reserve super was the um, Surya with HMG and tactical awareness. Then this guy was the one that was carrying the Xenotag, represented by this token here. And in my case, I just place this miniature from Aleph uh, at 20 centimeters synchronized, so perfect with my Suryat. So we started moving with no arrows. Um, I was actually just covering like half of my table a little bit. So just for you to know, this is one of the antennas. So this guy is just moving, not yet reaching the half of the table. So this guy is moving, now he's passing, he's, uh, he's successfully passed this, uh, to place the the Xeno scan or whatever, it's, or the multi-scanner, I think it's called. Yeah. So this guy is keep moving with the Xeno tech, keeps moving, till he finds a spot right here. I made a mistake. Uh, this eco drone should have been here, just covering this area, because that was, you know, so well played for my opponent. So he's coming here and he's shooting the pistols in the end. I'm shooting my, my pistol bag. But uh, I didn't succeed either on um, getting him down or at least passing the, the armor roll. So meh, I get a wound and then I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and in the end I decided to just leave it there. Like, come on, you're a tough guy. You can get some shots back. And that's what happened. <laughs> because why did I do that? Because I thought if I just move back, I won't still be in cover. Plus, my pistol will suck and his combi will actually be in bonus. And my failure bug is gonna be at zeros. So this guy's got mimetism, and this guy's got um, cover. So it's gonna be very hard. So yes, I could just be in, um, you know, dodging and dodging till I get here and then maybe, you know, and make his life harder, but I decided to stay, mainly because this guy was covering this line and I thought, you know what, how many orders will it take to really kill this guy? Well, that's the answer. <laughs> okay, it took just a few orders to, you know, literally, like, remove it from the table. So, okay, fantastic. 67 points gone, turn one. Few orders spent, so fantastic. Okay, then he's moving this camo marker. He's crossing a little bit the table. He's getting to this point. And finally, he's trying to tag if there's line of sight, um, but with my Krakow Renegade, but no, not yet. But one of the things I've learned with the Slave Drones is that I can really show you where, unless I go back. Hold on. Let's see if I can find... Wait a sec. I think I'm going to go to the here. So basically, I deployed one of these slave drones right here because in cover mainly because I what I, one of the things I've learned is that it's very nice to have this guy that is actually three points with mimetism in cover and it's very annoying because 
it really provides um, discovering errors to these all these common markers that are trying to knock on your door. So I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to place it here. So one of the orders was actually to blast these this three points with mimetism and cover. And he manages to kill him. But fair enough. Now he's right there. Um, I know that he's a Libertos with um, light shotgun and something else. Can't remember what. But now he's not going to be that... <coughs> sorry. It's not going to be that hard to kill him. Because he's rebuilt. So, okay, fine. So once again, now this guy is moving across, getting in line of sight with my Cracker Renegade, that if you recall, he was facing my enemy stable, so he basically should, uh, with the light shotgun, to actually succeed him with, bow, uh, with both um, dice roll. But I was very lucky here because I managed to pass both armor, um, yeah, armor rolls and just uh, turn in such a way that I could be facing him and something else, you know? So, this time, my Raktorak is actually succeeding, he's miserably failing, and after a few pictures, I kill him. So, good. That was nice. Then these guys are, the Makol is uh, moving across the fence, well, not across, but I mean, moving this way, throwing some um, Eclipse grenades, and that was very clever, because my Surya was at uh, that, right that side of the table, so he's actually... Um, willing to go to the other side, spending few orders, as you can see here, just moving across the table horizontally towards my right side of the table where my Sagara was, but it's no longer there. So, perfect. He's moving, 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 and he finally... Uh, okay, so that's my turn, sorry. I think he ended up here, just placing these guys, in, a, in my opinion, in a funny way, because um, boarding shotgun or Vulcan shotgun um, could literally blast them all, including this camo marker. So, mm, not that sure that was a good idea, but, well, whatever you come, I mean, whatever it comes here is going to be error by three miniatures, so at least it's kind of fair. Well, then that was my turn, and, and as an act of revenge, this guy came here, blast with the Vulcan shotgun, killed this guy, let me see, yeah, killed this guy, so I was like, okay, finally something's going right. Oof, sorry, I think it's pretty much the same. Okay, then my Surya is moving, no errors are provided by my opponent, so perfect. Then I'm, I'm placing the... the <laughs> I'm just laughing because I'm just reading this, and that's a fucker, which is not the right thing to be placed, but I didn't have a, a multi-scanner uh, marker, so I'm just placing the multi-scanner, fine, this is done, fantastic. We forgot actually to count this multi-scanner at the end of the game. But well, it's irrelevant because both of us did, so perfect. So then my story just keep moving, keep moving. Now, as you can see, it's my opponent taking the pictures, and that's really nice because he really helped me out doing that. And basically, I just want to kill this guy because if this guy is killed, he's not playing more multispectral uh, visors, and then my smoke works. So story is basically uh, getting out and getting in. One of the things is that there is a Sukul right here, but all this, uh, this guy is actually blocking his line of sight. And I'm just placing the Surya in such a way that this guy is not actually seeing it. So perfect. So I'm just shooting at him in a couple of orders. I managed to kill him. So perfect. No annoying arrows. And then my rug. No, not right to right, sorry. My Cracker Renegade started running across this box. Um, I wanted to do a, a cautious movement, but then I realized, hey, wait a sec, this camo marker will kill my my cautious movement. So what I did was, you know, my meta chemistry role was plus three physics plus regeneration. And I, there was a slightly line of sight here. Moving, If I wanted to move towards this side of the building, there was a straight line of sight with the Sukil, with the missile launcher. So you know what I thought, you know what, it's just a crack card and I'm actually just, um, I'm actually dodging at 16, which is pretty good. So let me try, let me try, let's see if I succeed. So that's what I did. I moved 
and then I was out of line of sight but of course he shot the missile and I dodged so that was perfect because then nobody could see me here and then I kept moving and moving till I got to this side of the table and I came here I said hi what are you doing so this guy is basically shh, um, <coughs> All of that was standing up, so I moved in a such a way that only the first one could see me. And basically, uh, he said, "I'm go okay. I'm, go I'm shooting you with the pistol, whatever. I can't remember or the maybe the yeah, the pistol because that was the HMG." And I just test mine on on him. I was very unlucky here because he either passed all the the dodging um, rolls or he tanked all the armor rolls or whatever, but well, I basically did jack. So then, what I thought is, okay, you know what? <coughs> Sorry, I'm gonna engage this Suko, and I'm gonna just go on on CC. So I managed to remove everything and actually kill the Suko. Yeah, I killed the Suko as you can see right here. And then I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna move right here. Not in line of sight with this guy, but let's see what this guy does. Because, okay, he's if he throws the 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 flamethrower, I'm shooting at him three dice with my submachine gun, shock ammunition, bye bye, another order, and another annoying guy gone. But uh, uh, I was uh, I was going at fourteens, and I got two fifteens and a seventeen, and this guy burned to death. So you who. So, that, fine, I don't know, okay, then I spent a command token, <coughs> sorry, and I did a coordinate order with this uh, Raktora with the Vulcan Bulk, shotgun and my, my total reaction bot, and I was just moving, basically, um, moving, moving, and then I placed this guy right here, and I... Forgot to mention something, but one of the the rules, um, I, f I failed one of the rules and he got a wound. So I, I was like, come on. So in the end, my turn ended by placing and um, putting this guy in suppression fire. And I thought, well, he's here and I don't know what's going to happen, but if he gets killed, it's not that bad. So then he moves on with this guy ignoring my, my Suriat. And because this is the... The girl we, which is like operative specialist, I think. He connected the antenna. Let me see. Oh no. Okay, sorry. So he throws some smoke, covering this with a clip grenade, and once it was safe, they just all move and activated the antenna. So perfect. They they were moving back towards the original position. And moving, moving, crossing the table, moving horizontally all the time. They finally got to that spot <coughs> where um, he basically shot at my Suriat. I failed everything, even the armor rolls, and this guy completely died. He was, again, removed, not even unconscious. So I'm, at this point, I'm thinking, whoa, that's going to be tough because I just lost both of my, of my spearheads, which were the... The Sogorat and the Suriat, I'm um, only left the QR drone and it might not be the best option. So, it ends up like this, showing a little bit here and a little bit of that side, I think. So I'm just moving my QR, giving assisted fire, moving from one side to the other, spending quite a lot of orders here, till I got to a point I could shoot at the Sukeul. He tangled all the rolls, and finally, she hides. So I'm like, fantastic. Then I'm moving back, and I'm placing the QR right there. And, oh, no, I think I'm just... Hmm. I think there's a bit of... Uh, I think there's one turn here that I think we missed. Hmm, maybe not. No, I think I just moved all the way back, but it's not this time. I think... It was placed right here, okay? And then in his turn, what he did was he connected antennas, he controlled antennas, and that was pretty much it. So in my turn, 
what I did was to give uh, assisted fire again, I think. can't remember that much. But um, let me see. Yeah, basically what I did. Oh, we forgot to take pictures here. Okay, that was, that was important. Okay. Okay, let's go to this point. Basically what I did in my turn was I moved my NCO guy, my Raptor up, to the group where the Gakis and the Osna were. <coughs> Sorry. And basically I just moved all the way. I connected one antenna. I came back here. I came back here. Uh, I did I did that with my, as you can see it's here, my, my total reaction board shot at this girl, this girl hide, and then it was my turn to move this Ragtorag all the way here, and then I blast this this heart, well, this riot with the Balkan shotgun. The only one that left al that was left alive was her, with actually just one wound left. So then what I did was, there you are, there you are, here they are. Okay, so what I did was, I just moved my, my QR drone again all the way, all the way this picture till I got to this point. I just blast this Suke and I didn't want to be picky, but okay, anyway, the way it was facing this, it was kind of like that. So I could have just actually shot, you know, with no um, um, arrows left. But I thought, you know what, this is just like a game for fun. Although it was a mission and a leak or whatever you want to call it, I was just like let's let's some cl class some rolls. So I I just beat her. So fine, no more, no more Suke especially that one that is the only, the only nice specialist uh, he's got. All right, so you can see she's dead right here. Then it's his turn, and then he's moving this the the last trial left, the one that I killed the uh, Garrael. So these two guys are moving forward uh, towards the antenna that, by the way, was taken by my Ractorac. So they finally got here and they activated the antenna and they decided to control. I think that's his turn three and his last turn, uh, effectively. So they got the antenna. And then uh, this guy is placing some smoke, this Mako that was here alive, the one that killed my, my Cracker Renegade, is placing some smoke. Sorry, I have to cough again. <coughs> a dry, dry throat. Anyway, so now this guy that is chain of command is moving forward, and of course this mod will not be enough because if you remember my my Q drone is right there providing the arrow because I knew he wanted to do that. So he risked it, and he finally ended up coming here and activating the antenna. So, here it was a bit of a discussion because I was told that if you're trying to connect an antenna and I shoot back, this, uh, this dice roll are actually uh, clashing. But he told me that, no, it doesn't work like that. Actually, your shots are for free and my activation is for free. They, they, don't, they, don't, they won't clash, they won't um, confront. So I don't know. Well, we just decided to keep going like that, and that's he was actually blasted, of course, but he controlled the antenna. Well, I mean, he activated the antenna. So then it was my last turn, and it was pretty easy to finish because my Osna went there, <coughs> shoot some smoke grenades. Let me bring something. All right. Um, I think I crit, so I was like, ooh, the first crit, or maybe the second, but we didn't crit each other that much during this game. So I was placing some small grenades here, and then I was just counting, making my numbers on my head, because what I needed to do was, let's see if I have more pictures, yeah, I need my hackers just to go all the way there, connect the antenna, and that's it. So that's what I did. Basically, I'm just uh, taking my hacker now and I'm showing very quickly how it moves and how activates the antenna. Then, on the other side, this hero of the day, the Raptor with the Bul uh, Vulcan shotgun, the one that blasted this riot, 
uh, it was actually hidden here in the last in the last shot. He didn't have enough orders to go and chase him. So what I did was basically I came here, I synchronized the HVT, and then I just placed it, um, basically controlling the tech coffin right in the middle of the table, because that's giving you extra points. And of course, he's not my um, data tracker, but at least he's doing something. Okay, he's actually um, giving me five points. Or four, can't remember now. Um, one one thing extra is like I was like, okay, well, I think it's pretty much done. I think I'm just moving there, and I didn't count that. Actually, these gakis were here, and it was funny because um, reading twice the rule of the HVT, especially in the new um, ITS uh, number ten, I think. If I have in my zone of control. He's designate he's design um HVT and he hasn't got any troop in he in my HVT zone of control. I can change then my classified mission for this. Okay, so I get the extra point. Whereas if he has any troop nearby my um HVT, then I can't I can't change the the classified, okay? So because he didn't have any troop nearby my HVT and I did have at least one, okay, it doesn't matter the points or it's more about having someone here, I got that point. So in the end, oh, no more pictures? Oh, well, in the end, it was 8-2. Of course, we didn't count the Xenotex because otherwise the, the real uh, result was actually... Um, nine three okay so that was pretty good it was really fun and and just very easy going game we didn't argue about you know lines of sight or we just i think we used the later twice and this is the kind of games i really like because it's more about you know giving and getting you know sometimes it's a bit confusing and it's like well you know what Mm, just remember this action. I, I'm gonna allow you to do this because I think it's it's not you know it's not fun to be that picky because some players are very picky. You know, it's like no, look at this laser. It touches one millimeter of your of your base. It's like yeah, come on, that's not the way to play. So I really had fun. It's not because I won't because as you know, if you if you've been watching my my videos. Uh, especially with Mora, it is quite probably that I lose. But I'm just getting very comfortable with some of the lists I've been playing recently. And I really like one of the lists. Sometimes I need to modify this list a little bit, like readapting the list, the original list to the to the mission. But that's pretty much it. Um, sometimes it's just about finding the right list for you. And I think I finally got this list and I really like it. Of course, it doesn't mean that I'm going to be playing this list forever, but uh, yeah, I mean, that is a, a good scheme of work to start with, basically. Well, that was all, people. I hope you enjoyed this um, bad report, and I'll try to, you know, do more and more. So keep watching, and if you like it, subscribe. If you don't like it, just share a comment. Okay, just let me know. I'm a teacher. I need to know why you, you didn't like it. Okay. <laughs> All right, people. See you soon. Bye.